Well, hi, welcome everybody to another uh, Women Lead Online Forum. And today we are really, really lucky to have a couple of, of subject matter smarty pants uh, in the hot seat. And uh, this is our Ask Me Anything uh, forum. And we're really, uh, it's a treat to have these two ladies they are so knowledgeable about everything you want to know about cars, of which I know very little um, not because I couldn't learn, but because I have no desire to learn. So I'm really excited to hear what they're going to share with us today. And our session today is going to last for about an hour. And if you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guests and attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome. This is a conversation. It's not necessarily an interview. Uh, but if there's something you want to ask anonymously, just put it in the chat and I will share it for you. So our subject today, like I said, is chicks with cars and so I'm really excited to introduce today Susie Clisson and Kim Walden so let me tell you just a little bit about them and then they'll be telling you more as as we go through this so Susie Clisson has over 30 years experience in the retail automotive industry as the co-owner of West County Tire and Automotive she started when she was only four so that's why she had so many years <laughs> And they offer retail, wholesale, tire sales, full service automotive maintenance and repairs. And Susie is an expert at sales, operations, marketing, customer service, vendor relationships, and back office. And she's also the owner and founder of Sue's Garden Floral Preservation and Custom Keepsakes, where she creates custom floral preservation keepsakes for weddings, memorials, anniversaries, birthdays, prom, engagements, all of those things where you have beautiful flowers that you wanna preserve and keep forever. And our other guest is Kim Walden, and Kim is the owner of Budget Transmissions and Complete Auto Repairs, uh, which is a member of the Highland Area Chamber of Commerce, and they have been in business for more than 35 years. So Kimberly Folio Walden was a bank manager for 13 years when she quit to become one of the owners of her father's business in 2001. She says we're a family-owned corporation and we are certified as a women owned business and triple a approved auto repair company kim echoes her father's words when discussing the business success we are only as good as the people that we hire i love that so welcome ladies and let's get this party started what would you like to what would what's the most burning thing that you want to tell us about managing our uh, our lives with cars our necessary you know appendages there <laughs> well i i think it's it, personally it's having a good automotive repair shop to go to it's like having a good doctor mm -hmm. you have somebody that you can trust someone that you know is going to take care of you and they're going to be honest you yeah. what we do here at my business is we're going to let you know what you need to fix now what you can wait and fix later or even if you need to get rid of the vehicle mm -hmm. so we're about relationships back to us it's not about give me all your money so you need to again you need to make sure you have a relationship with a shop that that you feel comfortable with um my business was triple a approved and if any of you ladies don't have a triple a card i highly recommend it um, to anyone that i meet you don't have to have your insurance there you can just have the card and then that provides you towing if you run out of fuel if you lock yourself out of your car if your battery dies and, and, you know, that's under $70 a year to have mm -hmm. those services mm -hmm. for my shop to get approved as a AAA repair, uh, repair facility. It took a year. They make sure you're oh, wow. certified in everything, which all of my mechanics are ASC certified. It's automotive service excellence. They also make sure you have all the tools, the proper equipment. They even go down and check your bathroom and make sure you have the toilet seat covers. So <laughs> it's, it's very detailed. Um, they contacted 400 of our customers to make sure that we provide excellent service and we got 100% rating. So um, it's, it's a big deal to be a AAA shop. And, and I, I did bring one of my one of my little signs to benefit a card holder. Um, it's, you get quality service, uh, warranty, written estimates, um, roadside assistance, free maintenance and inspection, which we do a 40 point inspection. And um, 
So if you're not around mine or Susie's shop, make sure you try and find a shop that has a AAA logo, even if you're not a AAA card holder. At least you know they have been uh, checked and they are accountable for doing things right. Doesn't mean they're perfect, but at least you know that they have some accountability. Yeah, that's a great, great point. Susie, what do you want to share with us as we kick off? Um, no, excellent points, Kimberly. And um, we don't have the AAA, but however, we have ASC certified. We have the logo everywhere. We have other accountability. You know, we're, um, we're a Goodyear um, Automotive Center, so being part of the Goodyear family, we have all of those systems in place, um, the nationwide warranty, all of those things as well. And we do we do work with AAA as well. Um, but no, very important um, to find a shop that you're comfortable with. And um, being a woman in an automotive shop, I notice when other women walk in and they see me there, their demeanor changes, they're more comfortable, they're, they're happy to see a woman there because they know that's going to change the dynamic in there, they're going to feel more comfortable. Um, so that's a big deal to us. And I, you know, being, a, being the only woman there, I keep my guy, it's a family shop as well. We've been there um, since 77, similar story. We're going to have to talk some more. Kimberly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my father-in-law started the business and uh, we, we live and work in our community. So when you live in your community and you have a business and you're fixing people's cars, you better damn well be honest and you better know what you're doing because people see you in restaurants and grocery stores and they're, you're going to want them to be nice and like you still. <laughs> so. Um, it's a big deal to to have be straight with your customers, and that's that's going to create that customer loyalty, and they're going to tell their friends, and they're going to. Many of our customers have driven and I mean lived out of the area. They've moved out of the areas miles away from us. They've moved to the Inland Empire, but they'll still they'll drive. They'll make the trip to Orange County to come to my shop because they've maybe tried a local shop and they weren't comfortable, and they know us. They trust us. Once you find that place that you trust, it's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, uh, we used to live in Chula Vista and had a, a great uh, repair shop. And it was like once you got um, comfortable with them and trusted them, I didn't want to go anywhere else. And even after we moved all the way up to North County, I would drive all the way down there to have my car taken care of because I trusted, you know, him. I trusted the other people in the shop and so forth. And, and the only thing that would have made it better would have been if, you know, there'd been a woman behind that counter instead of, you know, having to, to trust him. But it's a huge testimonial and it's an honor when we have customers that will do that, that we mm -hmm. see throughout the years come back and drive those miles just to come to us. So that's when we know we're doing something right. Yeah. That is excellent. So I have one question just to kick off with right away, and then you guys just dive in as, as you want to. But seriously, what is up with the check engine light? I mean, <laughs> why? Well, I can answer that for you. I'm sure Susie can too. Uh, the check engine light, you know, most of the time it's something major, but it could be something minor. Like you just didn't tighten your gas cap all the way. Um, what you want to watch with that is it could be your um, exhaust emissions is having issues. If the light begins flashing, you could be looking at a, a catalytic converter issue. So anytime you do see that check engine light, you want to make sure you have it checked out for sure. Even if it's even if it's just you forgot to tighten your gas cap. Sometimes you have to replace your gas cap even because the seals around that can be old. Thankfully, the new vehicles don't have that. But yeah, please. Check that out. Um, you know, either one of us, Susie and I, I'm sure we'd be happy to help you. And I, I know with us, you can even call us over the phone and we'll, we'll give you some advice over the phone and we do free diagnosis. And so we're, we're both here to help you as women owned business. Cause I agree with her. We run into people that we work on their cars and you want it, you want them happy. You want them to come back and refer their family and friends. And so what do you think Susie? Yeah, no, the engine lights, a, it's a very important light. Don't ignore it. Um, it means something's going on in your vehicle. Um, I've, I've had the light come on and it was my gas cap and I know this stuff, you know, and I have my guys, look at, check it out, check it out. They're like, you didn't tighten your gas cap. You know, that's, that's the easiest fix, but it could be a number of any other things and you, we want to be safe on the road when that light comes on. Mm -hmm. Check it. Yeah. 
So how about you guys on the call? What are your, what are your big burning questions about taking care of your car? Anything that keeps you awake at night? Yeah, hi everybody. I, I would probably say, um, I think for me it's about the tires. You know, I cannot tell you how many times strangers have come up to me, and I'm not exaggerating, at a grocery store, um, at uh, the flower shop, it doesn't matter, and say, hey, I just wanted to let you know that your tires are, or your, your passenger front tire is completely bald. Um, I have no idea. I mean, it, it's just, it's nothing that ever crosses my mind. So, I mean, we go to the dentist every six months to get our teeth clean. You know, we, we fill up our gas tank when it gets, you know, to about a quarter tank. So how often should we go in and either A, just have our tires checked or B, like, should we get new tires every two years, every, every year? Like, you know, I would just, I would just love some basic maintenance feedback on that because it seems to, every time I've gotten new tires, it's because someone said, hey, I just want you to know your tire is completely bald. Mm -hmm. So it, that didn't happen like overnight. So clearly it, it was ready for a change long before I got to that stage. Yeah. Well, I'll just go ahead. Um, what you want to do, you can visually see that it's easy and you can come into the, sh come into my shop if you like, and we can show you and you, there's little measuring tools that'll measure your tread depth. And so that's going to tell you how, you know, and you also want to keep track of and keep records of the tires and when you bought them and tires have shelf lives. They have, you know, how many you know, mileage and how long they're going to last. And so you want to keep track of your mileage and when you bought the tires, but also the visual is the best way to take a look at and see if your tires are bald or not, but just make it a habit of coming into your shop and having your guys, you know, take a look, can you check my tires, check the tread depth. They're going to be able to show you with a little tool and you can even get one of those little tools. A lot of shops sell them and you just hold it up to the tread and it'll measure it for you. And it'll tell you, Hey, it's, you know, you're getting low. It's time. And having a bald tire is very dangerous. So you do want to keep an eye on that. Absolutely. Thank you, Susie. So, I mean, just, just as a practice, so you think like, you know, and I, I absolutely agree taking a look at the visual, but like with bringing it in every six months, I mean, is that a pretty good standard? Absolutely. Yeah. If you're not sure looking at it yourself, just come on in. It's free. Okay. My guys will just take a look at it. It takes, it takes five minutes and it's free. So it's a date. And I recommend every time you get an oil change, of course, have your tires rotated. And then again, like Susie was saying, have your tires looked at at that point too. Mm -hmm. That way you're, you're staying on top of your, your basic maintenance. Okay. Thank you. And is that usually part of the oil change maintenance list, right? You'll tell us. Yeah. You typically it have. That looks so good. <laughs> a lot of times you have to come in and ask for that and say, I want my tires rotated too. So, Just make sure that they've, yeah. you know, make sure they've done it. Like some, if you go in for oil changes, sometimes they'll, that's all they'll do. Some places they don't do. Cause in my shop, we have a checklist. My guys have to check off everything that they look at and they let, let, it, let us know that they've seen that, but just ask the question anyway. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have, am I interrupting anybody? <laughs> I have two questions. Number one is, uh, you know, some cars tell you you should change the oil every 3,000 miles, some, you know, every 8,000 miles or whatever. What is, what is the norm and are there different standards for different cars? Like the BMW is, is one because they say, you know, like every 10,000 or 8,000 miles, whatever it is, you know, which is so much more than other cars. So what is, is there a norm? Is there a standard? It does depend on your vehicle and also the type of oil you're using. If you're using synthetic oil, um, you know, all vehicles are a little different. That's why you want to look at your owner, owner's manual like the Bible. But typically, I would say you're looking around 5,000. 5,000. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Owner's and manual is where you want to check to look at your, your vehicle's maintenance records. And you uh -huh. want track of those as well, because it's going to help you in the long run keeping track of those records. Because when you go into your shop, you're going to have that information and you're not going to be able to be taken advantage of as well, because you're going to have the last time you had your oil changed, they're going to be able to, you know, look at your mileage od odometer and check that. And you're going to know where you're at and what your manual says. I've heard some people say, uh, uh, well, you know, the manual tells you the optimum, but you should really change it at this, you know, so 
I don't know. It depends on how much you drive as well. It depends on your mileage and how much you drive the car. I mean, if you're driving lots of miles, like right now, a lot of people aren't driving very much. But that's also important to know. Um, I put an article out that when your car's sitting still, that's not good for it either. You've got you've to check it as well. The tires are sitting there. The oil's sitting there. Cars are built to be driven. So that's kind of a, something you have to watch too. It just depends on your habits and how you drive. I'm glad you said that, Susie, because I was wondering about the impact of having your car sit idle for, for so long. Yeah, it affects your battery, your oil, your tires, um, just things that are sitting still, you know, things need to move in an engine. So, yeah. We are moving the car now at least once a week. Is that okay? Because someone told us that you have to move your car, it's not your battery is going to die. In fact, my husband's uh, car's battery died. So we have to move it, and also for the tires. So once a week, it's okay? That's good. Okay. Yeah. So my, my other part of the question was, um, you know, on some of these cars, you have sensors, and they seem to like go off when nothing's wrong with the car. Like I had a sensor that, um, well, my tire pressure is low, okay? Go in and I put the tire, the 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 air in the tire. You know, two two weeks later, my tire pressure is low. So then I take it in. So you know, it's just the sensor, and sometimes it just seems to be so sensitive. I have a sensor right now on my brakes. It says I need brakes and brake pad. I've yeah. taken it in like three times because it does scare me. And the dealer first, I took it to the dealer, then I took it to another BMW shop, and they both told me not to worry about it because I still had like by, I don't know, whatever number it was, 5% or 8%. Yeah. Uh, I still had brakes. They assured me it wasn't going to stop. It wasn't going to not stop on me. Um, and so I said, well, can, can I take the sensor off? <laughs> you know, yeah. but no, you can't do that either. Yeah. Um, so right now I'm driving around with the, you know, the car, the brake lights on, which I hate. And I am going to get the brakes fixed. I still had about another eight months on it you know but i don't think i'm gonna wait that eight months because it's very scary with that light come up you know so yeah. uh, well, lights, lights always come on because there is a reason for that but if they're yeah. warning did they check your brake fluid pressure that could also be an they issue check everything they check okay. everything yeah well, keep your eye on it so. you know <laughs> yeah i am i am i mean obviously i don't want to be driving and i can't stop but yeah. and i am going to get it fixed before the time period. I know I am, but so, it, it's- So sensors even go bad. So sometimes yeah. that's the sensor yeah. itself that they, you know, that they might want to check if, you know, everything else has been checked, they'll check that too. Or the, uh -huh. you know, electronics and those kinds of things. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, I used to have a Scion and, uh, and it was the TC, the coupe model, and it had those low profile tires. You know, Susie, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. And they had, okay, I'm gonna probably say this wrong. I think it was they had nitrogen in them instead of regular air. And so that tire sensor went on all the time. It's like I would go in, they would check it, say, nope, it's great, or they would top it off or whatever they would do, you know, and then like, drive around and then bam, there it would be again. And one thing I discovered, and tell me if I'm wrong or not, um, was that in the morning when it was really cold until the car warmed up, I would have that light sense, that tire sensor on. And then once I drove for a little bit, it would just go off. Does that make sense? Normal, yeah. Okay. Temperature affects everything in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Temperatures, when it's extremely cold, when it's extremely hot, you're gonna have different things going on. I have a question, a uh, similar lines um, to Kay's question about the sensors. I, my car has sensors also when another car gets close to you or you get too close, but mine goes off when there's nobody near me. <laughs> um, and I, it just uh, leads me to believe, I mean, it doesn't happen enough that I'm overly concerned about it, but it le led me to the question, are you guys, you know, two things, are you guys seeing a lot that your technicians and stuff have had to learn about these new technologies in these newer cars? And additionally, like, what's your thought about going to a, a, a dealer or a, I'm sorry, a shop 
not the dealer, but a shop that um, specializes in certain cars. Just your input on that. You know, that is helpful. Um, like my shop, for example, we are certified in everything and all type of vehicles. Um, and it sounds like your vehicle personally is having issues with your own sensors. We don't come across that a lot. So, you know, as long as you find a shop you're comfortable with that knows and they're certified in everything, you should be fine going to them. The dealer is always going to charge you too much money if you're not under warranty. So we get work from the dealer in other places and sometimes they don't even touch the car and people have to pay double or triple and they didn't even know it. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, as soon as I go out of warranty, I, I stop going to the dealer. Yeah. yeah, if you're under warranty, let them cover it. Yeah, lots yeah. of times too. I'm, I mean, if your shop isn't familiar with some of the new technology, there's been times at my shop where there's some new technology that's come in and we have to refer you to the dealer because they're the only ones that have, has some of those parts, some of those, um, the diagnostic equipment to even look at that, look at that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a challenge keeping up with all of the new technology coming out every year, the new vehicles. Um, sometimes my guys open the hood and they're just like, what is that? <laughs> you, know, and, um, you know, we're, you know, sometimes not all the shops are up to speed on all of that yet. Lori, maybe your car is just antisocial. Oh. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't off. like anybody Get getting too close. Yeah. Get Are you driving an Infinity, Lori? <laughs> no. Okay. A Mercedes. Okay. It's an older one though, and I think I don't know if there's a you know, if there's a process to like clean all those sensors or something. That's probably something I should find out about. And you're still under warranty on that car? No. Oh, no. no. Okay. You know, the rule of thumb with Mercedes, I used to have one. You're supposed to get rid of them when the warranty's out. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. But I've had like three and I've had them for You've had good luck. many years past the warranty. But like somebody was saying, and I don't drive as much. They sit in the garage. You know, I take care of it. I do the maintenance as it's supposed to be done. And that makes a big difference, you know. Good. Okay. On top of that, Sorry, do you know what your make and model is on all of on the year? Um, and I'll ask John, my husband, if he's had any issues on that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So why? Maybe we could meet for a drink and talk about it, Susie. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's a date. <laughs> any excuse, right? So don't have yeah, the exactly. car too close to Susie because you're flashing. Make <laughs> the car go off. I, I, why do dealerships um, charge more? Why I, wouldn't it seem like it would make more sense to create loyalty with, I bought my car here, I want you to take care of my car here, I, you know, I'll buy the next one here. Like, why do they, what's the reasoning? I think it's because people are under the impression that they know everything. Um, and they are trained, and, but a lot of their guys are new. They're, they're coming in, they're trying to get experience. So, you know, you may think you're dealing with someone that has a lot of automotive uh, repair experience and not. So, you know, they got, they got the big name and people think, I got to go there to make sure my car is under warranty still. Um, that's not always the point. We take care of a lot of people's vehicles Myth. that are under warranty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. They sell you that warranty. They sell you the warranty when you buy the car to come back to them. Um, not to say that they're not, you know, really great technicians, they are, but you can be under the impression too, and um, something I want to clear up is that it, you, to keep up your warranty, you don't have to go to the dealership. You can still come to, uh, you know, Ma shop, and we can take care of that maintenance for you and put it in your, your books, and your warranty is still good as long as you've had those services done, and you can, you'll pay a lot less for it. Mm. That's good to know. What about, uh, here's, oh, I have a question. Uh, what, what is your input regarding electric cars? Because sometimes, you know, especially my husband hesitates about electric car versus the traditional car. So it's, it's more. I think, uh, I think it's preference. Um, you know, electrical car, you're still going to have some things that need to be done. Like you're going to need to get tires from Susie. You know, you're still going to need windshield wiper blades. Um, it just depends on 
what you're comfortable with. You know, if you want to go charge your vehicle at different places and you're um, not concerned about running out of, of electric, then go ahead. I'm, I'm all about the horsepower and gas and, you know. <laughs> Another thing I want to add about electric cars and um, talking to one of the engineers that built these electric cars, um, you know, they seem to be more environmentally friendly um, all of that about them looks, you know, like it's, you know, saving the earth and all of this, but literally these cars, the batteries in them are not going to decompose. They're, and they're costly. To break down these batteries in these vehicles is a huge cost and they're not going to decompose anytime soon. It's, they're going to, the landfills are going to be worse off with these kinds of batteries that are being put in these vehicles. Um, they're not really, at the end of the day, environmentally friendly. And you could be spending thousands of dollars to replace those batteries. They, they are very costly to replace. So one way or another, you are going to pay, even if you're not paying for the gas right now. Yeah. Not on um, hybrid then. Same, same, because it also has the electric battery in it for the hybrid. I didn't hear the whole question. I'm sorry, you're saying, is that the same for a hybrid too? Because it also has a battery in the hybrid car? They're gonna be expensive also. Yeah, also safety issues with the electric vehicles. Um, firemen are trained that they cannot use the jaws of life on those vehicles because they will be electrocuted. So when those vehicles wow. have accidents and those kinds of things, it's very, very dangerous for firemen to, to rescue and that kind of thing. Wow, I had no idea. That is amazing. Yeah. Uh, an electric car? Mm -hmm. Oh. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, didn't know that. Can you repeat that again, please? Sorry. Can you repeat the last statement again? Yeah, sure. So the electric cars, the hybrid cars, when there's some kind of accident and say you need to be, you know, the paramedics, firemen come and they need to, you know, extricate you from the vehicle, if that's the case, they're not, it's very, very hard for them to use any of their equipment on those vehicles because they can be electrocuted. And it's very, very dangerous for them to use the jaws of life and all of those kinds of things because those cars and the electric batteries that are in them. Okay, cross those cars off the list. <laughs> and you know, my brother bought one, um, and he was, you know, he looked at the like you have to look at the miles that you can get on a battery charge, and that is, I guess, affects the cost of the, the price of the car. So the longer the battery, the more expensive it is, right? But he bought a car, and he had a certain commute, and he thought he had plenty of miles, and then one day there was an accident and he had, you know, got rerouted on his way home and all that kind of stuff. And he was like sweating it that he wasn't going to make it home. And if you are stranded somewhere, it's really tough. So you really have to make sure you, you know, you know what you're getting into, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good point. Those long extension cords are just, they kind of clog up <laughs> the freeways. And, uh, <laughs> Hey, um, Sean Marie posted a question in the in the chat, um, and it said, "And Sean Marie, if you're still there, I mean, just jump in and correct me if I say this wrong. It's what's the biggest misconception about women being in the automotive industry, and have either of you ever experienced any kind of discrimination as a woman in a male-dominated industry?" Uh, Patty, you, you asked that beautifully. Ladies, I have to hop off, but I wanted to thank you, and I will listen to your response on the replay. Um, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, ladies, so much. I can't wait to hear your reply. Have a good day, everyone. Bye, Sean Marie. Bye, loves. Yeah, so let's hear the, the answer to that. What, what kind of discrimination have, have you experienced um, in the automotive industry? Okay. I per oh, okay. I personally haven't had any issues. Um, you know, I, I, pers I don't fix our cars. All my guys are ASC certified and I don't know everything. I know I go out there and teach women about preventive maintenance, what to look for. Um, like I was telling Patty, different 
warning smells or vehicle lights. But my guys are the experts here and they're the ones that are gonna look at your vehicle. It's not gonna be me. I make sure my guys are, are trained and ready to go and on their A game. And when I'm out there in, in the field, trying to get new business for us or at different uh, chamber events, I always get very good response. People appreciate the fact that a woman is here to make sure that the guys are doing the right thing. You know, um, when you come to our office, we have the cookies and the coffee and our bathroom looks like it belongs in a home. You know, I, I want to make sure <laughs> our customers feel comfortable here. Um, I've gone to a lot of shops that there's greasy hands all over the wall. And you know, when you come to uh, a business like ours, you feel comfortable and you do have that relationship and you deal with the same people every time being a family owned business. I know Susie knows this too. That my dad's here, my brother-in-law, my husband, um, our employees, we've got a great crew that have been here for at least 10 years each. So um, that's also important. And you know, I, I'm proud to go out and represent my business, our family business, and go out there with, with class and show that you know we're part of the community and we give back too. So that it, it makes a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you, Susie? Yeah, um, a woman's touch is important in a male world, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, I, you know, I just came back into my business, into the shop full time, um, just this last the beginning of the year. And literally, in the five years I've been gone, there's some stuff that's still been sitting there right where I put it. <laughs> really, the guys are like, oh, and it's wow. like really, you guys? <laughs> Because they just, they're the technicians, they're the mechanics, they're the operations part of it. So coming in and um, being that, putting that, you know, extra added things that women see that the guys just don't see is great. But as far as um, discrimination or um, having any issues, uh, when I first started in the business, I was really young. I was 20, in my 20s, and my father-in-law threw me into these sales classes with these 40-year-old owners of other shops. So I had a really fast sink or swim and figure it out. And, you know, you fake it till you make it right. So um, I was, but, it, but, it, but I learned quickly that I was learning the same things at the same time of these other gentlemen. And so, um, you know, we were at a level playing field and respectfully, they respected me. Um, some of them even tried to hire me away from the family because they wanted a woman in their shop because they knew yeah, that that sure. was really important. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately I said, I can working for my family, can't go work for you. But, um, it was, it was a, a good experience, but I've also had uh, an experience where one of my technicians, uh, not really quite knowing that I was part of the ownership of this shop, not really realizing it. Um, I went out to hand him a ticket to, and asked him to stop doing what he was doing on one thing and I needed him to finish something else for a customer. And he looked at me and just said, no. And I said, okay. So I went in and I told my father-in-law who was managing the shop at that time, you know, so-and-so told me no. Um, oh, he said, no, you're just the office chick. Oh, <laughs> oh no, you didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. My father-in-law, who I, when I look back on this, I think, oh my God, I didn't realize at the time how important it was, what he did, but he went out into the shop and he fired that person mm. on the spot. Oh my. I mean, you can't do that these days, but back then he told them you're done. You don't call one of the owners, the office chick, and you do what she tells you to do. Mm -hmm. He empowered me. He empowered a woman. And I was so, you know, I look back at that and think, wow, that was more men should do that for women mm -hmm. and stand up that way. Yeah. Wow. Very That's cool. beautiful. Beautiful. Have you either, either one of you ever hired a, a female technician? Are you both talked about your guys that are working there. Have you ever had a female technician? No. You know, that's funny you ask that. I just did a, a bridal bouquet in my other side hustle, and it was for a female technician. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I don't see too many women technicians. No, she oh, came uh, with her flowers, and she was this little, tiny, petite, cute lady. Wow. And I asked her what she did. She said, I do oil changes and transmissions. And <laughs> oh, my God, I love it. Oh, okay. Wow. I know. 
was great. Um, no, great. I'm like Kim. I don't touch the cars. <laughs> um, it's and you have to have really strong oh, hands, I would think. Yeah, it's. I wanted to when I first started, but they wouldn't let me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Did Did you offer her a job? <laughs> you know, um, I have her information. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I'm, you know, who knows? I might just uh, call, give her a call. But she seemed to be working at a place where she was really happy. So, mm -hmm. yeah. cool. That's cool. So, I have two questions. Yeah, go ahead, Christine. Okay. So, first question is: Are there brands that either of you two recommend um, for someone who is interested in purchasing a car and isn't not a frills person, but just want like a car they can have for a while and just drive to the ground. And second, <laughs> um, how, what, what are some ways you both learned to repair cars yourself? And what are some resources you would recommend to someone who's interested in learning how to de IY um, a little bit. Well, personally, I recommend uh, Honda or Toyota products. You're going to have the least amount of problems with those, and they're going to last a long time. So, you know, as long as you stay on top of your maintenance, then you're going to have that vehicle for a long time. In regards to fixing the cars, I've been brought up in the automotive industry. My dad's been doing this for over 51 years, and I don't do any of my own repairs. I let my certified mechanics do it because a lot of times I have run into people that have tried to do some of their own repairs and the vehicles are more complicated now than they used to be. Um, it ends up costing them more money in the long run to do their own repairs because they start taking it apart and then they're bringing you a box of a puzzle almost and um, that can cost you more money. So we, you're better off finding a shop you're comfortable with and build that relationship. Like I was saying before, I don't know if you were on that call, Christine. Um, get a AAA card if you have their roadside um, assistance with towing, fuel. You don't even have to have your insurance with them. Rent you about seventy dollars a year. And um, if you, if myself or Susie aren't by you, go to a shop that has the AAA logo on it. And they've been certified and they have a background check to make sure that they're doing it right and they're going to take care of you. Not perfect sometimes, but they're they're there to take care of you. Yeah, great info. Um, a lot of times we'll recommend Hyundai as well. Hyundais are really nice vehicles and the, my technicians seem to really like them and their um, uh, their, price, their pricing, I guess, isn't uh, as good. Um, but uh, Kia, no. Some of the other ones, no. <laughs> um, and I'm with Kimberly. I don't touch my cars. I have my husband and my guys and they, can, they do all of that for me. But I do want to recommend to be a little bit knowledgeable. Do you know when you, if you're going to go into the shop as a woman, um, and you think have you have a repair? I mean, I'm telling you, my guys YouTube and Google things all day long because they're they're learning. You know, the new technology coming out. A lot of it is already on YouTube and Google. Google and YouTube what what's happening to your car, and you're going to find maybe some verbiage, some parts that when you're talking to your technician and you go into the shop, you're going to know what they're talking about. They're going to tell you some things and you're going to have some knowledge about what they're speaking of so that you won't look like you have no idea and you're, and that's probably a better chance you're not going to get taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's good. And I, I know that I've gone out and looked up certain things like, you know, like if you have a smell coming from your car, some weird smell and you don't know is that my brakes? Is that my tires? Is that, you know, is the oil burning? Is that, you know, what, what's happening with that? So I've gone out and Googled that sometimes just to give myself an idea of what might be going on. Um, it might be a little bit like Googling stuff before you go to the doctor, but at least, you know, you feel like you're a little bit armed with, with some information. So that's a great analogy. I mean, you're not going to try, you know, we go to a doctor because we don't know our bodies and what's happening and we need that expert opinion. We need that expert person who's trained. Our technicians are like car doctors. Mm -hmm. You can't fix your cars. You know, you need to take them into the experts uh, a lot of times because they are the ones that know, they know the workings and everything that's going on there. So, I mean, you know, you might have a, a guy or a boyfriend or you might be a great 
technician, but you know, <laughs> yeah. How, how about the air filter replacement? I feel like that's the one that like dealerships get me on all the time. It's like slightly gray and they're like, this needs to be replaced. And then I go back later and realize, yeah, no, not really. <laughs> Any suggestions on that? Thanks, Ubi. <laughs> Just like I said, keep good records. Make sure you have the last time you replaced it on file so that you know, you know, and know your manual and know how many miles it should be. And, you know, that's going to help you. You can, in fact, I took my dog, I, we're doing a road trip tomorrow. We're driving from Utah to California. I took, I went into the local Goodyear store here. I said, Hey, check my, check my daughter's car. And they, you know, they wanted me to do an oil change, but I knew we had just done it with synthetic oil. So it didn't need it. So those are the things you want to keep records of so that you know, um, and, and they're just doing their job. You know, they're just, that's the recommending service. It's their upselling. That's just how they do business. A lot of times that's on their list of things to recommend. If it looks a little bit dirty, they're going to say something, but you know, that's up to you to be knowledgeable to say, no, I know I just had it done. Yeah. And typically you're looking anywhere from 12 to 15,000 miles that you should replace your air filter, but it also depends on how much you're driving and the area that you're driving in. So, um, yeah. you know, like Susie said, keep track, uh, use your owner's manual, it'll, it'll give you a lot of information on that too. That's great. These are good questions, you guys. Isn't it, isn't it cool to have somebody here that knows, you know, somebody, somebody who knows more than we do about this kind of stuff? <laughs> Yeah, a lot of it's common sense, you guys. It's it really is. And like, you know, like Patty, you were talking about the smells. Smells are very important. Um, you know, if you're smelling something that's not right, there's something not right. Um, also, you know, turn your radio down sometimes and listen. Listen to the sounds that your car is making. Be familiar with the sounds that it makes. If it's making a sound that it's not supposed to be there, something's going on. So just be aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with your windows down. <laughs> <laughs> Those of us that drive around with our windows up and the radio on, we don't hear anything. <laughs> but but some of the typical warning smells, you're looking at burnt rubber smells, um, you're looking at the hot oil smell, um, gasoline, um, a sweet syrup smell, burning carpet smell, rotten eggs. Those, all of those smells, there's issues that come with them. Um, so just like Susie said, stay on top of that and, and smell your car. Yeah. I actually had a, a, a speaker wire short out in the back of my car and they could, it was the weirdest thing because the smell, you could smell it, yeah. but the engine, you know, any of the diagnostics that they did didn't show it that anything was wrong. Mm -hmm. So they finally, you know, I just said, well, it's there. You got to figure, <laughs> you, know, you yeah. got to find it. Well, and that's not something typical, you know, so. Yeah, you just got to hold your ground and go, it's not acceptable to say, I don't, I can't find it. Yeah. You got to find it. Sometimes you have to drive with the mechanic. And I've, I've had to do that before when I had a car under warranty and show them, you know, get in the car with me. Let me show you what it's doing. And sometimes they can't yeah. touch it themselves. So you have to show them based on your action if you're making a right or left turn or, you know, so yeah, be be proactive. It's your car. You know what's going on with it. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. You know, they used to say um, years ago, and I don't know if this is still true or not. So, but they used to say once your car started having electrical problems, that it was like, it was no bueno. It was like, just shoot it and get another one. So <laughs> are things are things better in that realm now or uh, still the same or? Again, you want to go to a shop that knows what they're doing. Um, my guys deal with that kind of stuff all the time. And, you know, it's, it's not an issue as long as you're going to the right place to be able to help you. And if not, then they'll tell you, oh, we'll tell you, you get rid of this car. Um, yeah. This can't be fixed or you're looking at um, opening up. So yeah. it's back to going somewhere you can trust and they'll come to you. Yeah. There's many times you can fix some, if it's electrical, it's something easy. And if you have a good technician that's, that knows electrical, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. The shop did that for me. That was really helpful because I trusted them and I was driving a car that I shouldn't have been driving for that those last month or so. And uh, they were very honest and said, 
you could have us fix it, but you're probably better off replacing your car for what it's worth. You know, like, mm -hmm. well, let you make the decision, but. <laughs> right. You found a good place then. So exactly, good. exactly. It's nice when you can trust yeah. Yeah. giving you advice. So instead of them just putting more and more money into your car and it's just very frustrating when then you have to replace it in two months anyway. <laughs> so it's not worth it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I liked what, Kimberly said earlier when she was first talking about, and I have a, a mechanic now that I trust, and and he did the same thing like you were talking about. It's like, okay, you need all these things, but what do you need first? Because like we couldn't afford to do all of those things. And you know your car gets to so many years old and everything starts to happen, but you need, a, I think, having a mechanic that could say, okay, this is what you need first. And then when you can bring it back, we'll do these things, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Not everything is urgent. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good technician. That's a good shop that's going to help you decide what's the most important thing and what can wait. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, car repairs, they're, they're expensive. We go through, uh, we have a lot of our customers go through Steam Cleaning Car Care, the financing program, because, you know, you're, you're not prepared when it, there's a big bill for a transmission or an engine. And they have a program where for the first six months, um, there's no interest. So if you do run across that, and of course, if you're not by me or Susie, um, you can create car care, check them out online and apply for one of their credit cards to take advantage of not having interest. Can you, yeah, we can you repeat that? Repeat that? It's a uh, synchrony car care. Yeah, so it's a finance company. Definitely take advantage of that if you, if you need a, if you have a big bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of times you can just qualify for it right there in the shop as well. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's good. That's good to know. Well, ladies, this has been awesome. I really appreciate you taking so much time to be with us. It, does anyone have any last questions, last comments, Susie or, or Kim, anything you'd like to leave us with as far as how to be good car owners and, and responsible car owners? I have yes. a question. Okay. I have a question. So at home, I have I have an enthusiastic of autonomous cars. What do you guys think about autonomous car for the future of the industry? What, what, kind, of car, what kind of car was it? Autonomous. Autonomous car? Auto autonomous. Self-driving cars. Oh. Oh. Cars. oh. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> what do you uh, think about that? The impact. Because those kind of cars for the industry and how reliable they can be. I have an enthusiastic at home about that. So it's like okay, <laughs> I, I'm I'm not a big fan of it. I've seen uh, a couple issues on the news where people have fallen asleep when their cars driving for them, and I don't know. I'd rather be in charge of my own vehicle because things can happen. You know, just like Lori was talking about, her vehicle goes off when there's not even another vehicle around at the center. Yeah. That's great to have. When it works, um, I don't know. I I'm not. I wouldn't be comfortable with that. <laughs> what if it's short circuit? What if something goes out? You know, we have right a here? long way to go. I think we're just learning at the same time as you are about these cars. I mean, we have a long way to go with this, with these things. Um, time's just going to tell the story on that. As far as repair and maintenance on them, we haven't come across any of them yet, so I don't know. Yeah, us either. So. Okay. Thank you. Sounds like a bad I, idea. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my advice to you ladies is, um, you know, keep an eye on your dashboard. Those warning lights are on there for a reason. So if one of those come up, you know, me or Susie would be happy to help you. Check your owner's manual, Google it online. Um, but, you know, be aware of there, those come on for a reason. It could be, you know, the sensor's out, but um, there's always a reason those lights are coming on. They're to protect you and to protect yeah. your car. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Those lights are really important, especially the hot and cold. I just, if I could leave you with that, never, 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 never drive with your car on hot. Never pull over right away. Pe uh, yeah. People drive with it hot and they blow up their engines all the time. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do, it's a huge expense, huge. And it's a simple thing to not drive with, the, with your car on hot. If your car's on hot and you're in trouble, put, put the heater on. Put the heater on full blast 
and that'll cool your engine and pull over and get a tow. Yep, call a tow truck. Don't let it go in the red. I agree. Yeah. It costs you so much money. Yeah. Well, Kim, why don't you tell us where your shop is and okay. how people can reach you maybe by phone? Okay. Well, again, I'm Budget Transmissions Complete Auto Repair. We're in San Bernardino. Um, our phone number is 909-886-2844. Our website, budgettransmissions.com. We're here to help you ladies. Uh, even if, again, even if you're not close by me, if you have a question, feel free to call in. You can talk to my brother-in-law, Brian, on the phone. We're happy to even give you some verbal advice for free and tell you what you should do or not do. And, you know, we just, we're here to help you ladies. Great. And Susie, how about you? Where can we reach you? Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, and it's great because Kim, you're in the Inland Empire. I'm in, in Orange County. So you got her out there. You got me in the OC. So um, same offer goes here. If you need any any questions answered, I'm all, you guys are always, you know where I'm at. You know where to find me. Many of you, you know me, you have my email. If you don't, um, it's uh, the, the number at the shop is 714-750-6333. And the website is westcountygoodyear.com. And you can go on there and get the, get us there or Google us and you'll find us. We're in the Disney um, Anaheim Resort area on the corner of Chapman and Harvard. Great. Well, thank you again so much. One more for... thing, Patty. Oh, sure. Okay, girls, go to my Facebook page, Budget Transmissions, and every Tuesday I have Tip Tuesdays on what to do for your vehicle or what to look for. So that'll give you some direction to and some, some extra knowledge. Great, awesome, good job. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. spending so much time with us. Thanks to all of you that asked really great questions. And I, and I wanna thank my cat that's asleep behind me because he was, <laughs> he was riveted by this conversation. So make sure that you, you watch our Facebook page, watch our um, Connected Women of Influence website for the next upcoming Ask Me Anything. And we look forward to seeing you all again. Thanks again so much, Susie and Kim. Take Thanks care. Thanks, Patty. Thanks, Thanks ladies. Thanks, ladies. Have a great day. Appreciate okay. it. Bye. Bye, guys.